You're listening to Anatomy for Life with Crystal and Nicole, where we discuss the anatomy behind the most popular physical and spiritual practices so you can get the most out of these modalities on your healing journey. Welcome to our podcast. Welcome back to Anatomy for Life. I'm Nicole. And I'm Crystal. And as always, we're going to just take uh, about 30 seconds to tune in and get ready for the podcast. So if everybody palms up, if you're driving, keep your eyes open. Otherwise, you can close your eyes. Take a deep breath in. Hold it. Breathe out. Another breath in. Hold. Breathe out. Take a minute. Just notice where you are. Notice how your body feels. One more breath in. On the exhale, open your eyes. All right. We're so glad that you guys joined us today. We have an awesome, amazing, special guest. Yes, I'm so excited. This is one of my best friends, Mo. (laughs) And she's here to talk to us about booty yoga and all of all that that encompasses. So a little bit about Mo is she's actually a studio manager. Um, She's running Freedom Yoga for us locally here right now. She does Reiki trainings, Reiki 1, 2, and Master. So we will tag her and put in the comments below how you can get a hold of her and learn about those things. She is an amazing yoga teacher, teaches booty yoga, yin yoga, um, and has been doing this for years. She's a meditation teacher, yoga major teacher. You probably have as many hundreds of hours in teaching under my belt as I do now with all her training. I know, I just what love it. it. Can't do that. What else did I forget? <laughs> awesome. What are I some other amazing talents? Okay. Who knows? A little bit of everything. <laughs> I think you really got it all, though. Yeah. Why That's don't we mean. talk a little bit about, okay, first, maybe what is booty yoga and maybe some misconceptions about what booty yoga yes. might actually be. <laughs> There's a lot. <laughs> yes, I'm sure. Yeah, so I feel like when people first hear it, they think booty, like B-O-O-T-Y. Uh, it's spelled B-U-T-I, and that means, like, uh, the cure that's kept hidden or the cure that's been kept secret. Um, oh, will you say that one more time? B-U-T-I means? The cure that's been kept hidden okay. or kept secret. I know, it's super cool. And, you know, not secret or hidden in like a people can't know about this kind of way, but in a more like sacred way, you know, something that's not just handed out to everybody like it's nothing. Um, and so that's what that means. But really, there's, I mean, do you want me to jump into like the nitty gritty of it? Yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. So, um, there's five different aspects of booty yoga that make it booty yoga. And one of them is vinyasa yoga elements. That's like kind of, I think they call it in my training, like vinyasa core elements. So really just the basic, basic, uh, postures in vinyasa and the flow and that kind of stuff. So you'll notice if you've ever taken a booty class, like we'll be in those core vinyasa postures and then add on booty elements to those different postures. So that's one of them is those vinyasa core elements. Another one is cardio intensive dance. So booty is actually a hit workout. Um, so you'll notice that like we'll go super hard and get the heart rate up and then we'll chill out for a moment. Um, and that's the cardio intensive dance is when we're getting the heart rate up. So I we're, yeah, I, <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> I know about that. Um, <clears throat> and so just different, like there's not any sort of rhyme or reason to the actual dance moves themselves. It's like, as long as they're safe and they get your heart rate up, uh, it would count in that category. Another one, um, is primal movement. And that's really, I feel what people, what distinguishes booty from many other different types of movements. And what's interesting is I had somebody say to me, especially when we were creating classes at the studio that I manage, somebody said, well, can we just put it under the category of hot bodies? And I was like, oh, interesting. Like I never even put those two together. But now that she made that comment, I was like, I can see a lot of similarities. And um, primal movement, I would say, is the one that really takes it out of that category. And cardio intensive dance, obviously, you don't do either of those in Pilates. Right. (laughs) Um, So, yeah, we get down, we get primal, we, it's just, 
it's really cool. Again, no rhyme or reason to any of the moves. There's suggestions that we got in our training, but you can do anything that feels like prime. Explain, like, explain one of those to like our listeners. Like, I know I've been, and I'm picturing like when we're like squatting down on the ground, yeah. like hitting the ground. Yes, is yes. That, like, so one? drumming is a huge, like, I think a lot of people use that in the in a booty yoga class for that primal movement. Yeah. Um, hitting the ground, but also just like drumming in the air, drumming on your body, like your chest and things like that. Yeah. Um, lots of like you said squatting down getting like low to the ground not even necessarily squatting but just like scooping low to the ground random movements like that that are like very low and primal and um Mm -hmm. i don't know you're you're so good at teaching it and there's so many i know i'm not good at like yes it's like it's like a felt thing i just wanted people to get an idea yeah well, I'm glad you're picturing, picturing like, like a primate, like an actual yes. monkey, you know what I mean? Like taking you back to like that grounding. Like exactly. How they, right? yeah. We do a lot of that. And it's so funny because especially even when we're doing those primal movements, people start to get really noisy during those. Like their growls will come out and they'll, they'll, <laughs> you'll oh, yell wow. a little bit. There's a really cool picture of Crystal being primal in a video. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I need to, we need to post that one. <laughs> I will not post that. Okay, I Maybe I will. Um, okay, so the next one. These two, these last two, I think are where people might like overlap it with Pilates a little bit. The um, next one is strength and conditioning. So where we'll do a lot of little like pulsing movements. Um, whether it's for like a lot of work on the glutes or the hips, the quads, whatever it may be. Um, that is one of them. And we do a lot of that in Pilates as well. So I teach hot Pilates. I don't know if you said that. So oh especially, God, yeah, yeah, I love hot Pilates so much. And it's a, a mat Pilates, not reformer or anything like that. And it's cool to be able to teach both of these and see where they overlap. And then their massive differences as well. So that's why I keep bringing that up. But the last, um, aspect of booty yoga is deep core conditioning and that's where the spiraling movements this spiraling movement this is so interesting in booty yoga's like papers that we signed in their contract you're actually like technically not allowed to teach like a spiraling movement in like a vinyasa class you know obviously i'm sure it happens all the time but that's like their trademark their thing um and so those spiraling movements are a huge part of booty and as well as like pulsating movements in the chest and abdomen as well very small movements Mm -hmm. and the spiraling is where the anatomy of the core just blows my mind we can talk about that later if you want or if you want to jump we can talk about it now i think because that was the part that when i can't started coming to your booty classes and workshops that i started feeling just Mm -hmm. like an intuitive sense of like this movement is doing something for me. Yes. And I think when I mentioned that to you, the first thing you'd ever said to me was, yes, in training we learned this, and here are some benefits, which you mentioned, postpartum recovery Mm -hmm. and pelvic floor dysfunction. And I was like, tell me more. (laughs) (laughs) I went down the anatomy rabbit hole. Everybody (laughs) wants those things. (laughs) So, So I can see how those other four things that you led up to, um, are going to correlate and help with the things we're going to talk about next as mm-hmm. supporting features. But when we get to the anatomy, and another thing you don't know about anatomy, I mean about Mo, is that she is an anatomy nerd like me. And so we have these conversations <laughs> all the time. <laughs> well, I, I was an anatomy geek until I met you. And I said, oh my God, I've never even heard of those things that you know about. <laughs> I'll take them as a compliment. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> so I want to hear first what like the basis of your training went over because I know booty has a really mm-hmm. comprehensive, amazing core anatomy thing. So yeah. let's start with that because that okay. like correlates to booty. Yes. So the spiraling motion, uh, you can spiral in your hips, in your ribs, in your chest, really you could spiral anywhere, but the, like the main, uh, like chunk of your body is where you would usually spiral. Um, and, with the anatomy of the core, it's just fascinating. So I only learned this in my uh, training for booty that the way that she described it, she actually drew this like cylinder type shape on um, the whiteboard that we had in there. And she was like, this is the bottom is your pelvic floor. The top is like your lower ribs diaphragm area. So it's just like this cylinder with all this cool stuff going on. Mm-hmm. Um, and the most 
the deepest muscle is the transverse abdominis and that wraps correct me if i'm wrong like sort of around your spine and helps support your spine so it's very deep it's your deepest core muscle so you've got like your serratus and your rectus abdominis and your obliques uh external to that mm -hmm. but just to be clear it doesn't wrap around your spine itself it's as if you put your hands together fingertips touching around your entire torso so it's mm. superficial to your intestines interesting and it wraps around you like this i had a chiropractor say this one time when we were talking about better ways to phrase abdominal work like that and he mm -hmm. came up with this phrase called abdominally brace mm. and i love that he called it abdominal bracing and then another visualization he came up with which i loved was it's like you take your soda can when you're done drinking it and you squeeze it. Oh, we all do that. Yeah. So when you shorten the muscle fibers because they run mostly laterally, mm -hmm. that's the cinching that's going to happen around your entire core. Wow, that's that really helpful. Visual? Yeah. Okay. Like the soda can analogy. That really yeah. helps. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Visualize. That changed yeah. my life. <laughs> so the four i'll start by saying this because the four muscles of the core that we really focused on was and i'll, I'll go deep into these so i'm not just going to throw these words out Thank there you. but rectus abdominis external oblique internal oblique and transverse abdominis so with only those four in mind and nothing else because as we know there's a lot going on in that area um the deepest would be the transverse abdominis and then the internal oblique external oblique and then rectus abdominis you know obviously they're in different areas but the rectus abdominis is like the glamour muscles the six pack it's very superficial and one thing i learned in the training is um that many people like can develop those muscles and you'll be like oh that person's ripped they've got a six pack but then if you ask them to lift and hold like a v up or whatever they likely will not be able to hold for very long at all and then my sweet boyfriend who does calisthenics and yoga and all this weird stuff, he holds like nobody's business. And it, like, he is the strongest person in his core, but he doesn't have that six pack, you know, mm -hmm. he's going to kill me for all saying that. that. No, you're so validated. <laughs> <laughs> Tell him. I know him. If it makes him feel better. That was the story of dating my husband, actually. Oh my gosh. Cause he was like the most ripped person at the gym. Obviously, that's yeah. probably what got my attention. <laughs> and then I would invite him to come to Pilates with me. And then I would beat him every time yep. on those exercises. Yep. And I never had pronounced external rectus abdominis yes. muscles. And I would be like, wow, isn't it funny that I can do these things and you cannot? Yeah. <laughs> so. That's totally how it is. Um, yeah. For real. And that shocked me because I was like, that makes so much sense. But... If you give somebody who's at the gym doing like, you know, 400 sit-ups every day, they're not still not going to be able to like sit and hold for more than what, 30, 45 seconds. Yeah. It's the craziest thing. So, um, yeah, that is the, the most superficial that those glamour muscles and to target all four of those, it's very hard to fig to find a movement that targets all four of those, uh, pretty much simultaneously. And the spiraling movement targets all four of those muscles, especially through your abdomen. And I thought that was fascinating because I'm like, okay, so you're telling me I need to work out like by holding something for 20 minutes and by doing 200 sit-ups and blah, 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 blah. And then just doing that spiraling motion. I mean, you can feel it even if you're like at home or whatever you're doing, if you're driving, just spiral a little bit through your core, like through your spine, very, very small movements. We never do them big. Um, and you can feel just like places of your core that you've never felt before. And I think that's crystal probably, probably what you were saying. Yes. Like when I started doing booty, I was like, I work out my core a decent amount, yes. but I've never felt these, these muscles. Okay. That's all I want to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> There's a, a lot more I can say. I love, great. I love that. I think we'll just add that sentence, which is, that's what I was really wanting you to talk about because there there's this intrinsic awareness stability and benefit from working in that way also because we know that the fascial insertions transfer right to our pelvic floor that's where we're getting all of these postnatal benefits weak pelvic floor benefits mm -hmm. and all of like your vestibular translation through your whole body where we're always harping on people in yoga move from your core mm -hmm. you know move from the inward outward blah 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 well how is that happening mm -hmm. this is 
anatomically how it's mm-hmm. happening. Yeah. And yeah. when I went to Booty and felt that, I was like, that is the difference in my mind and yeah. that I felt since that I needed, whether you're explaining it to me or not. And your pelvic floor is also, I noticed, it was impossible to isolate that. That's also involved mm-hmm. with the little articulations of the hips and legs you teach in Booty. Yeah. So I love that. Okay, so there's there's that, and we will link lots of cool sources I have and things below. And we probably will post that picture of me in booty yoga because, I mean, Mo, I think is, we should. because Mo is teaching in that class and you can yeah. see her. Oh my God. And you can see our other go partner, viral. Megan, who partners in our yes. retreats and things. We're all there. And so you will get a great idea. And we oh will God. tag um, Mo so that you can go to her workshop. She runs. Are you doing those once a month now? Yeah, I, I do them monthly. Okay. Whether it's at Freedom or the Yoga Underground, but I try to so we want you to go to that. But the biggest thing we want to touch on at the end is this part of booty yoga where we shake. Mm, yes. Tell us about oh the shaking. Goodness. Okay. okay. Oh, man, I, I totally forgot about the shaking. How did I forget about that? <laughs> that's, that's like, that's like the, the, one of the biggest parts second to the spiraling for sure. Right. So there's two different types of shakes in booty yoga and really a lot of the shaking is in the lower back and the hips. And we just, as many of you have probably heard, like we store a lot in our hips. Um, and I just think it's cool. I haven't done a lot of research about this part, but I just think it's cool that the only two types of shakes in booty yoga are all about the hips and the low back. Mm -hmm. So, um, basically it's this whole shaking is, uh, based off of the, the, the thought process that we store trauma, energy, emotion in our fascia, in our connective tissue. And through like shaking and slapping and all this stuff, we can get it to move and maybe release. And um, that is the number one thing that I feel brings up these like emotional experiences in booty more so than any type of yoga I've ever taught. People are crying. People are getting angry. They're leaving like what the hell did you just make me do? Like they take it out on me a little bit, you know, just <laughs> random weird things that happen. Wow, and I'm like, that's amazing. what is this? And then other people will just be elated and they feel so light and just these big emotions coming up. And so I feel that a lot of that has to be attributed to the shaking that we do. I love that. It reminds me of one thing you said in our recent yoga training, teacher training we were mm-hmm. in together. Uh, when you said, Oh my gosh, that closed a loop for me. And you had, you had made this connection that benefited everybody in the training where you said trauma happens at a period in our life, but then we need to close the loop. Like yes. we need to complete it. Oh, and part of that completion, yes. that's one way of talking about it. And I love that straight from Mo. So quote her, but <laughs> one way of completing it, we were talking about is some of this work of releasing, bringing mm-hmm. up and releasing, like showing it somehow, right? Participating in it, breathing through it, looking at it, all the practices and shaking is a powerful one. So I am going to link an article and I'm mm-hmm. going to text it to you after this too. Yeah. Um, about research that walks you through animals, trauma response, because yes. they're working from their primal brain, right? And they'll say, they'll say in this article, they'll break the brain up a little differently than we have in other podcasts. Um, where they'll say you'll have your prefrontal cortex and then you'll actually have your limbic brain, which they'll call your second brain, which is keeping your responses online. But then you'll actually have been even beneath it, a primal brain, Mm. like a lower sense brain. You may have heard this called the reptilian brain. Yes. So I'll for sure give you more info on the brain, but it's that reptilian lower sense of the brain that the animals are working from when they're attacked, when they're scared, when something happens, animals shake. Yeah. And even afterwards, they'll continue shaking. Like if you've had your dog and he's heard the fireworks and the fireworks are done, he'll be under your bed shaking Yeah, for even longer, right? Maybe all night or maybe just 10 minutes. But that response is from your reptilian brain. And what they're surmising in this article um, and by the research is that it's the shaking that's that's getting that experience out of your tissues and your nervous system, specifically your fascia. And your neurological system. So you, if you don't shake and you don't complete the circuit of that traumatic experience, it will be stored in your body. And not only that, your switch for for um, your nervous system response, your sympathetic nervous system response, fight, flight, freeze, fawn. I'm sure there's more. Mm-hmm. I'd like to add to that list. The light switch is flipped on, and it will stay flipped on. So mm-hmm. the shaking will flip that back off. Yeah, in the animal that makes brain. so much sense, and I love it that it's just innate in them that they yeah. know 
That is what. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It makes sense. Brings about the chain, you know. And that is where I feel a lot too. After I've participated in booty yoga, sometimes after my meditations or something, I will shake. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Right? And I'll be like, yeah. oh, wow. Yeah, we do that just naturally. For yeah. Fun. yeah. Um, when we're doing that, and the, the thing that I read when we were in that teacher training said the traumatic experience or whatever it was um, needs to be completed. And every so often it's not completed because we are hindering that experience through thought processes, attaching, whatever you, whatever you do. <laughs> um, and every time I'm in booty, for example, when I was in booty on Monday, I was processing things from when my brother-in-law passed away two years ago. And I don't think about that day to day anymore. It's not like the, the forefront of my mind, wow. but I was just like, whoa, I haven't felt such big feelings from this in so long. And I can say without a doubt, every time I've practiced booty, something comes up for me to like process. It's not always like a, some big hard thing, but it's like, oh, didn't know that was still there, you know? And so I really attribute that to the cycle being completed when I'm ready to complete it. At that time, two years ago, I wasn't necessarily ready to complete that. You know, it was just, just being in the trauma, but now I'm more ready to close that loop or complete the cycle. So it's mm. coming up when it needs to. You know what I love about this is what we talk about on this podcast all the time is different types of healing modalities. Mm-hmm. And there's different ones that you might access at different times in your life to help with different things. And this is just another, you know, tool in your arsenal yes. that you could use to help you with that journey to re- to do some releasing. A lot of people say, well, you know, I'm going to therapy. I'm doing all these things and I'm not making much progress yeah. or you get stuck. Something like this could be the answer within you that you need. Yeah. As we've talked about in previous episodes. And that's, yeah. And that's why it's so cool. She's running a booty workshop every month because you don't know when you're ready. That's you better be there. <laughs> you better be there. You better, you better be shaking the it. <laughs> yes. But I just feel that, I mean, especially people who are like, I had one, one of my friends come up to me and ask me, uh, do you think that she's more reserved and a little bit more shy? And she said, do you think that this is something that I could go to without needing, like, a drink beforehand to, like, lose it up? And I was like, absolutely, please come without having a drink beforehand. And she came, and she was just like, okay, that was terrifying, and I loved it, and I have such mixed feelings about it. And I've I've gotten that review from a lot of people. Oh, you know what I was just, I was going to say, was that's um, interesting that that was stated because I have actually pursued prescribed is a funny word but given this to many people many of my reiki clients when they come to me and they're like this is happening and this is happening and, blah, 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 and we're like talking about it having a conversation afterwards mm-hmm. and i brought up the shaking and i'm like mm-hmm. okay just do that whether you feel weird about it or not you probably will feel weird about it especially if you're not used to it but shaking in the hips low back in the just like the, again like the trunk of the body where so much is going on okay. shaking and getting things out especially and this i feel like goes hand in hand with booty and what it what it stands for really um i was told probably like four years ago i was going through a horrible breakup and like crazy things were happening and i was like i don't even know how to get through this so i was doing what i thought i knew how to do meditating and then a friend of mine is actually Alyssa. She said, don't meditate. And I was like, why? That's all I know how to do. I thought that was a good thing to do, you know, meditate. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And she said, no, you need to cut through this like anxiety, this negative energy, this attachment with a knife. And you're not going to be able to do that if you're meditating and you're just pretty much spiraling in your mind mm. and being quiet. Like you need to be physical and tangible and primal. So she was like, chant out loud. Uh, do something invigorating physically. So that's when I got into Bikram yoga. It was like four years ago. Cool. <laughs> oh, cool. Yeah, that's how I got into it. Um, <clears throat> and now I've added on to that shaking. So when me and my partner get into an argument mm-hmm. afterwards, we're like, everything's resolved. We talked about it, but we both still feel horrible. And so both of us will either together in the same room or in other rooms, if it's too awkward and we feel like, I don't want to look at you right now. <laughs> Yeah. Then we will shake and just go or dance or like slap things or whatever. And it, it's like a reset. If you just had a button to press reset. Oh, I'm serious. Please try that. that. I love that so much. That's such solid advice from Liz. She's so amazing yeah. at that. And you have to use your physical body to move the energy sometimes. Right. And 
I teach in drug and alcohol addiction rehabs mm-hmm. every week. Um, and it's just my favorite place to be because I feel like that's where the work is to raise the vibration and, and heal the traumatized souls. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but one thing that is a phenomenon that always happens, uh, when you're in an addiction cycle or you're newly into recovery is it's difficult because of your disassociation model to get back somatically into the body and process mm-hmm. the trauma. And so what happens is when they first come in, they don't want to participate in the physical part yeah. of the yoga. Right. And we break it up really nice where it's a short physical part and then longer stretches and longer meditations mm-hmm. and chants and Kundalini. Right. But the ones who can't get off their mat and move physically can't move into the next steps. And the fourth step in the program in my program, <laughs> the thing I made up, <laughs> who knows if it's valid or not, it's always evolving, but it's funny. You said that she said to you don't meditate because I put that later on in the process yeah. because what I started noticing after a few years teaching, um, in these facilities was that we can't access the meditation if we haven't first gotten through the trauma in the body. Yeah. So I will talk to them about that and I will encourage them. And after week three or four or five, you'll see more of them being willing to get up off the mat and try moving. So cool. And those are the ones that can then access the meditation <clears throat> later. And so that's such a great, that's such great advice. I think, I think it was in her booty class that I had heard another part of advice like that too. And where I had started opening up to the sounds, like the visceral sounds that move through like your diaphragm yeah. and like actually being brave to make a sound out loud yes. because that felt like some of the therapy too. Totally. And so that's why the chanting, I think in that advice moved the energy better. Mm-hmm. So that, I feel like that's where booty yoga solidly sits in its purpose on the healing, you know, spectrum is like when you've got to move the energy, Booty is your best friend. Absolutely. And it also reminded me of one thing I wanted to share that came from my parenting class last year that you'd appreciate. Because another thing I about Mo things. is she's great with kids. <laughs> <laughs> she's oh, like, she's yeah. every kid's favorite person. <laughs> you're, you're, just you're, so, you're just so healing. But I thought you'd appreciate this is one thing to move through the trauma and arguments and kids with big emotions that can't verbalize them is to we had to create at one point in our parenting course playlists for different things. And one of them was a dance playlist mm-hmm. for big emotions that we can oh with gosh. our kids. We would name it our family dance emotional playlist. So we would play it as loud as we can and teach our kids to dance to that. I'm like surprised and not surprised at the same time. Right. This stuff makes so much sense. And I feel like everybody knows it at some level, even if it's simply, well, simply massively on an intuitive level when things feel uncomfortable, you want to move, you can't really sit still, you feel like you, people say, I want to crawl out of my own skin. Like, you want to move, you want to get it out, you can't be sitting there and just feeling that so big, you need to kind of move through it, you know? That is so cool, oh my goodness. Especially teaching kids that, because how many, not that meltdowns or tantrums are like, you know, something that can be fixed or anything, but how many meltdowns and how many tantrums would be, um, Avoided, maybe? Avoided or worked with in a way that is more harmonious than, like, stop crying, be quiet, whatever, you know, or oh. even trying to process in the moment when they're in the right as you know? as a, Yeah, as a <clears throat> processing tool in the moment. Yeah. And I was thinking as if you were doing this on the regular, you'd probably see less tantrum. Absolutely. Because you're processing it through your body. But even yeah. then... Even then, shake it out. I was taught bee breath when my oldest was yeah. really young and I couldn't break her out of the cycle or help oh, her through that tunnel. I would teach her to, to kneel down and you would go, and then put your head down. Oh, your head up. That. And that's like what you were saying in the moment. Mm-hmm. That's a tangible tool to get them through the tunnel. Yeah. And preventative. I like what you said though, because I feel like as an adult, I prevent my own tantrums by <laughs> going to booty yoga and shaking regularly. And even if I don't go to an actual, you don't have to go to like a booty yoga class to do the shaking stuff. I think it's, everybody should try a booty yoga class at least once, please. <laughs> but if you, if it's like not your jam or you don't have access to a class or anything, like just shake and see how that feels. It might feel so weird the first time, but right. Try it. It's in life Shaking spiral. Oh, thank you for that, Mo. Thank <laughs> yeah. you for having me. Thank you for sharing this with us. Of course. Once again, yeah. don't forget to look in our show notes so you can continue to connect with us. But thank you so much. Of course. Thank you. Sign on. Sign on.